Hello, in this series of videos, we are going to implement String Transformer from scratch in PyTorch and we are going to go over the code and see the code line by line and we are going also to see the size of the tensors at the end of each operation. So by the end of this uh, series, we should have a good understanding of the architecture and also uh, have a functioning code. In the first video, we are going to talk about two concepts. First, we are going to talk about the hierarchical structure and then we talk about the idea of shifted windows okay let's start to implement string transformer we are going to follow uh, the code that is available at this address and uh, this is not the official implementation but it's very well written and it's very easy to understand so we are going to follow that and the first thing that we are going to do is to import uh, libraries let me do that so we are going to import these libraries and one of them is not installed we are going to install that and that one is basically uh, this one that we need to install that here. Okay, let's look at the paper figure three. So if you look at the figure three, we can see uh, we have the image as the input here. And then we have four stages, stage one, two, three, and four. And we are going to create these four stages in our code. Okay, we are going to create a class here which looks like this. So we will go over the details of this class uh, later, but for now, let's see what we have. We have stage one, the stage two, stage three, and the stage four. And these are the four stage that we just showed in figure three. And this section is just your um, head for that we are going to use for classification. Okay, let's look at the forward function. So we can see image comes in and I have the image and then uh, image gets to a stage one and the output of the stage one gets to the stage two and so on. And at the end of the stage four, uh, we just uh, modify the dimensions by getting the mean. And at the end, uh, we use that head for classification. Okay. And um, anything else about this function um, that we want to cover here, for example, um, for number of channels, that is the uh, number of channels of your RGB image is three. Um, and also number of class, if you are using, for example, ImageNet, so it's by default 1000, but uh, we can have different numbers. Okay, let's go back to the paper to get a better understanding of these stages. If you look at the size of the uh, image, so we can see at the beginning, this is our size of the image. And then as we go forward, uh, the size is shrinking and number of channels are increasing. So we can see here we have H divided by 4 times uh, W divided by 4 times C. And as we go forward, uh, we can see the size of the image is shrinking and number of channels are increasing. So this is just like having a hierarchic structure in CNNs. So we are going to have a hierarchic structure. Let's look at that. Okay, we can see the hierarchic structure uh, that is something like this, that we have the input image here uh, as 224 by 224 by 3. And then as we go forward, so the size of the image is uh, shrinking and then the number of channels are increasing. So we are now having something like this for four different stages that we just showed in the class. So the first stage is going to be 56 by 56 by 96. And the second one is 28 by 28 by 192. The third one is 14 by 14 by 384. And the last one is 7 by 7 by 768. Okay, let's focus at the last uh, stage. Let's consider the last uh, stage where the size of the image is 7 by 7 and the number of channels are 768. Okay, what we are going to do is that we are going to consider each pixel of this image as one token. So for example, I can have a one token here. And I can have another token, maybe a token here. So overall, because this is a seven by seven image, so I have seven by seven, it's 49 pixels and now each pixel for us 
is a token. So we have 49 tokens. Okay. And we can do the same thing for the other stages. Let's look at the stage three. For stage three, if I consider each pixel in a stage three as a token, what would happen? So I have 14 by 14, which means that I need 196 tokens. And you could imagine its number of tokens is going to be even larger when I go for other stages. For example, if I go for a stage one, 56 by 56 is going to be 3136 tokens, which is computationally expensive and we don't want to do that. So we are not going to do that. What we are going to do is this. So instead of doing this, or for stage three, instead of considering each pixel as a token, what we are going to do is this. We are going to divide the image into windows seven by seven size. So I'm going to have one window here, seven by seven, and I have another window here, seven by seven, one window here, and one window here. And each window has 49 tokens and the tokens between these windows are independent from each other. They are not related to each other at all. Okay. And we can go forward. And for the second stage, we can see now I have four by four, a number of windows. And for the first stage, eight by eight. Okay, let's count the number of windows that we have in each one. So for stage one, I have eight by eight number of windows in the first stage. So it's eight times eight. I have 64 windows in a stage one. For a stage two, I have four by four. So four by four. I have 16 windows in a stage two. I have two by two. I have four windows in the stage three and for the stage one, we only have one window. Okay. The tokens inside each window are related to each other, but the tokens inside one window are not related to the other one. Let's look at one example. So imagine that I have two windows. One window uh, is the yellow one that we have 49 tokens inside that and those tokens are related to each other. Also, I have another window, which is a green one, and we have other 49 tokens that are related to each other. But there is no relationship between these tokens. Let's consider uh, two tokens. Okay, now let's consider I have two tokens that are close to each other, but one of them belongs to the yellow window, and the other one belongs to the green window. So right now, they are not related to each other, so we are not considering uh, any relationship between these two tokens. But Maybe these two tokens are part of one object and we want to have that relationship. So to address this, what is presented in the paper is called shifted window. Let's look at that. So the idea is this. At the same time, all of the windows shifted to the right and down and the amount that we shift is the half of the size of the window. For example, here, uh, window is seven by seven. So what I'm going to shift is uh, three pixels. So I shift all of the windows at the same time to the right for three pixels and all of them down for three pixels. Okay, now we have a shifted window. So in the new window, these two tokens are now inside one window. Let's see that. So in this new window here, now you can see these two tokens, now they have relationship to each other. Again, the shifted idea is to shift all of the windows at the same time to the right and down. And the amount of shift is the half size of the window. So we shift all of the windows together. And now after the shift, these two tokens are inside one window and we consider their relationship to each other. Okay.
And this idea is presented in uh, figure 3B. Uh, figure 3B is actually showing um, these two successive swing transform blocks. And we know that swing transform blocks, so we, we have these four stages. And in each stage, we have a swing transformer block. For example, I have one here. And uh, this figure 3B is showing details inside that swing transform block. So we can see inside the swing transform block, we have two uh, layers. The first one, so we have window multi-health self-attention, which is just dividing the feature maps to windows. And the second one uh, is shifted window multi-health self-attention. Something we just showed how to perform the shift, okay? Okay, let's go back to our swing transformer class and we can see uh, now, uh, for example, we have a better understanding of why we have a window size 7. So because that is the size of the window that we are going to divide each individual feature maps to uh, windows 7 by 7. Okay. And this downscaling factor is related to uh, shrinking the size of the image for our hierarchic uh, structure. That's basically this one, where from the 224 by 224, uh, with down a scaling factor of 4, we get to 56 by 56. Then by down a scaling factor of 2, we get to 28 by 28. Again, down a scaling factor of 2 gives me 14 by 14. And at the end, down a scaling factor of 2 gives me 7 by 7. Okay, that basically creates this hierarchic structure for us. Okay, let's go back to the code. Inside the code, what right now I'm going to do is to add a... Uh, the use of this class so let's uh, use this class here so we could say uh, we are gonna use this class and uh, the hidden dimension or the number of channels is 96 if you remember the C in our architecture and then we have uh, layers which is 2262 two, so what is this uh, layers let's look at the paper again because we are gonna use the swing uh, T so in swing T architecture, we have for stage one, two layers, for stage two, two layers, for stage three, six layers, and stage four, two layers. And that's the reason we can see here we have layers two, two, six, two, okay? And if you look at the paper again, we can see inside the paper that there are other architectures that are suggested. For example, we have swing S or swing B or swing L. But uh, for this code, we are just focusing on the um, variables of swing T. And the only difference between these architectures are the number of layers for the stage three. For example, for swing T, uh, we have six. For swing S, uh, B, or L, we have 18. And the other difference is that uh, the number of channels for swing T is 96. And for the swing S is still 96, but for swing B is 128, and for swing L is 192. But for this code and for the rest of the video, we are just focusing on uh, swing T. Okay?